Hello, this is Nick of Time. Thanks once again for joining us for this, our 15th talk on the physics of time. Getting so many talks that it's hard to keep, keep it straight, what number it is. Uh, we'll talk about the Hathaway keating experiment, which is one of the more famous experiments that was alleged to show that special relativity's time dilation is correct. We have a picture of a clock with wings, and we'll explain that in a few slides. Okay, let's look at the Half-Lake Keating experiment. Its purpose was to test special relativity's time dilation and general relativity's time dilation, which is quite different than special relativity's time dilation. We'll discuss this later, but often when you go into doing an experiment with the aim is to test some aspect of currently accepted physics, uh, the results will tend to support that purpose, that aim, or be interpreted as supporting that aim, whereas a closer look shows that there are problems with those conclusions. Okay, the physics of the half lake heating experiment is very similar to GPS, which again, GPS is not an experiment, but a working system, but again, it was alleged to be a test of the two relativities time dilation effects. Okay, Halfley Keating compares the atomic clock rates of identical atomic clocks on the surface of the Earth to those flying in planes to the east and flying to the west. And the results are alleged, well, the results were definitely, they confirmed clock rate as a function of velocity. And it was alleged that confirmed special relativity's time dilation effect. Let's look at a picture. Again, that helps to Visualize and keep things in mind. Uh, we have uh, three different clocks. One is on the surface of the Earth, and the Earth rotates to the east. Second one is on a plane. It takes off from the surface of the Earth, accelerates to rotating around the Earth, at a faster rate than the Earth rotates. And the third identical clock is put on another plane that accelerates and goes to the west, which means its velocity with respect to a non-rotating frame is decreased. So these three, the rates of those three clocks are compared um, to a virtual clock in the ECI frame. And remember we talked about the ECI frame when we were talking about GPS and about um, particle accelerators. Okay, so if a clock is going to the east even faster than the Earth is rotating to the east, then it will have a greater velocity than the ones on the surface of the Earth. So greater velocity means slower clock. The one going to the west will have less rotational velocity than the clock on the surface of the Earth, and less velocity means less slowing, which means faster. So when the data was done, uh, the results 
seem to confirm special relativity's time dilation. All the results were as expected, but we'll take a closer look at the logic of that data interpretation. Okay, for half a lake Keating and for all the other experiments, we accept the data and the data correlations, but not necessarily accept the theoretical interpretation of those correlations. We do accept the data correlation that clock rates vary with velocity. But we don't accept that's consistent with special relativity. I know we've mentioned this before many times, but it's worth going over. It's a super important point. One can't interpret special relativity's time dilation as describing physical changes in clock rate. Because if you consistently imply, apply that interpretation to, let's say, two clocks in an uh, inertial systems deep in space, moving relative to one another, you would have to conclude that B's clock was slower than A's clock, and that A's clock was slower than B's clock, which is an obvious contradiction and others have pointed that out, such as Herbert Dingle. And in addition to that, the data confirms that the effect depends on absolute velocity with respect to the single preferred frame, which in this case is the ECI frame, which is also the frame used uh, for the rest of the data we've talked about and not special relativity's construct of relative velocity. So we agree with the data, we agree with the math correlation between two different items, two different columns of data, one velocity, one clock rate. But we disagree with the theoretical interpretation of that correlation for obvious reasons that we've discussed. Now there are a couple of differences in the Halfley Keating experiment vis-a-vis uh, -vis the global positioning system. Uh, one is that the clock rates are not adjusted, so it's all the simpler to see that there are, we're talking about physical clock rate changes and uh, that they're a function of velocity. Second, we start with all the clocks on the Earth together uh, with the same clock rate and uh, synchronized so they're showing the same time. And then uh, an identical, one of these identical atomic clocks is put on a plane and goes to the east, another goes to the west. And then they're all brought back together again. So when we're comparing clocks, we don't have any problem with uh, relative simultaneity. It's crystal clear that one clock, in fact, the three different clocks have been accumulating proper time at different rates. So it's not just people observe different rates. In addition, uh, we see that the observed rates are, are asymmetrical, so even a just observed interpretation would not be correct. So, special relativities, time dilation equation is not consistent with the data of this experiment or with GPS. Well, thank you very much for 
joining us today. Let's take a quick look at what's next. We're going to say, address the question, why hasn't our interpretation been accepted? I mean, if things are so obvious and so clear, then it must be that we're not seeing things properly because the physics professors are obviously some of the smartest people in the world and have a great aptitude for physics. So why hasn't our interpretation been accepted when things seem so crystal clear and obvious? Well, I think 100 years from now, uh, scientists will probably focus more on that question even than uh, focusing on the fact that special relativity is soon to be seen as having major limitations and needs to be replaced. Um, not atypical to go beyond one paradigm to another paradigm, a better paradigm. Oh. But we'll also talk about um, relative versus absolute simultaneity. We'll cover general relativity's time dilation, which is quite different than special relativity's time dilation, and, thus if, and discuss a few of the implications of that. And ultimately, we'll go to part three, where we'll build a better physics treatment of time. So hope to see you back again for these topics. Again, thanks for joining us.